thanks everyone. What a great uh, networking crowd here, huh? Thanks, man. Yeah, good networking. Thanks, we're gonna continue with our program now, so. Um, so happy that uh, we're having some interaction here. Again, you know, thanks to, to everyone for attending today. You know, we've got um, on our registration table out in the, uh, in the foyer there, we've got the uh, attendees list and uh, some of the things. Rick, thank you. Okay, don't, don't, don't be a stranger here now. I know why it's not as nice to be, but you got to come in the hood once in a while. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Rick Rice, man, real nice guy. Ricky, uh, in, in Spanish, is Rico Arroz. But he wants to go with Rick Rice. Anyway, so next, who here is interested in the Asian American market in the Twin Cities? Well, if you're a marketer, you have to be. I mean, the numbers are there. Uh, the the uh, community, the uh, Asian American community, uh, and for your information, according to uh, the uh, current administration, has the highest household income in Minnesota. The, our Asian friends, the highest household income. And that's pretty substantial if you're a marketer. That means a lot. So, um, I don't think it's happened by accident. I think that uh, there's a lot of things that attribute to the growth. I think a, a classic story we like to tell is, is the story of University Avenue that was literally left for dead. It was the urban flight. Everyone moved out. Um, I'm not sure who the mayor was at the time in St. Paul, but he didn't know what to do. So there was this whole business corridor, once thriving business corridor, that was literally left for dead. It was empty storefronts. And, Everybody had departed. Uh, I think one of the mainstay icon uh, venues was the Prom Ballroom, uh, known throughout the country, closed, uh, parking, parking lot in shambles. So that was the story that was very real in the Twin Cities. Uh, both on Lake Street was another place in Minneapolis that you could uh, have reference to. And what happened? Well. The miracle happened, it was, we had our new immigrants move into the cities. Both Latino and our Asian friends, and, and they didn't see a abandoned corridor. They didn't see uh, a crime-ridden area, they saw an opportunity. They saw an opportunity to, first of all, get some, some rents that were affordable. And what did they do? Well, if you look at a University Avenue now, you have hundreds, hundreds of Asian-owned businesses. They saw the American dream in those corridors. And that's what happened on Lake Street. That was a, that was a terrible place over there. It was crime-ridden. What the Latinos didn't see, that they overcame that and they saw the American dream. So if you look at both of those business corridors, now they're changed dramatically. They look great, they're thriving and they have hundreds of Latino and Asian-owned businesses there. So these are entrepreneurs. And this market, the Asian-American market, is a market you have to consider. If you're serious about your business and your long-range plan, it has to, has to hold the Asian-American market. It has to be part of your growing in the future. So we're very fortunate to have, a, again, as we were mentioning, an um, a entrepreneur that's here from the cities. And uh, Wani Nguyen is a motivational, inspirational speaker. He's an entrepreneur, the CEO of, of WHI, host of the TV show Forward Talk, and an author who has written and published four books. He has some of his books here. And, uh, and the books went on to make Amazon's bestsellers list. Wani has presented to many leading corporations such as Dow Chemical, 3M, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Bremer Bank, U.S. Bank, Affinity Plus, Federal Credit Union, Thomas Reuters, Minnesota School of Business, and many uh, nonprofits and churches. He's been a guest on many national radio programs across the country and other media outlets. Today, Wani will share with you insights and strategies on how to reach and sell your products and services to the Asian American market. 
So without further delay, let's have a hand yeah, for Wani Win. Good morning. Good morning. When I was nine years old, living in a refugee camp, a friend of our family sent us these pictures. You probably look at it and say, Wani is just a family photo. Ladies and gentlemen, this photo here represent the American dream. Remember, at nine years old, I was living in a refugee camp. And when I look at this photo, it inspired me and wanted me to come to America to live my dream. Now, this is just a regular, ordinary photo. To you, it's just an ordinary photo, but to me, it was life-changing. I'll tell you why. TV, <laughs> cultures. You see, back home in Vietnam, the only furniture we could get to sit on was a wooden chair. We didn't get the luxury to have a couch. We didn't have TV. So when I saw this photo, I said, wow, I want to go to America. That's where I want to be. And ladies and gentlemen, at nine years old, living in a refugee camp, I envisioned my family coming to America. At our refugee camp, there's this bus station where every day a luxury bus would pull up and pick up a few lucky family to go to America. Every morning, I would go there. I sat and watched as family boarded the bus. As the bus take off, friends and family have waved the goodbye. I began to just visualize, visualize myself stepping foot on that bus. It was so vivid that I could smell the interior of the bus. I can feel my foot stepping onto that bus. Ladies and gentlemen, day after day, I went to this bus station. It did not happen overnight, but one day, my dad rushed home. I said, we're going to America. That was a life-changing moment for me. Okay, now we go to America. Many end the sleep. I could not sleep at night because I'm busy visualizing what I would do once I get to America. And before we come to America, they took us to this classroom training of what to expect when we come to America. I remember at nine years old, they gave us this brochure. In it, it was a catalog of apartment building, cars, clothes, all this luxury item brand name. And as I began to look through those catalog, I began to go, I want that, I want that, I want that. All the thing in the catalog, I envision and I want. Ladies and gentlemen, in a short time period, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what motivate Asian to buy. I'm gonna also share with you some of the technique of way to sell to the Asian market. Now, I told you earlier that this picture was inspiration to our family, right? What do you see here? Our family arrived in America, and the first thing we did was take a photo in front of TV. <laughs> That's me right there. That photo This photo here was the reason why our family purchased that TV, believe it or not. <laughs> now, it didn't occur to me until recently when I look at this photo again, and I realized that this photo was staged. Anybody want to take a guess how it was staged? 
Notice the TV sitting on a chair between the two couches. How many here will go to a family friend's house who have TV between the two couches? <laughs> right? So this was purposely staged to show family back in the camp that, hey, this is life in America. Right? And because of that reason, our family arrived to America and we did the same thing. Asian family, we are connected. When you go to the Asian family's house, you realize that you don't just see uh, the parents and the kids. You also see the grandparents living with them as well. Growing up, my parents is very big on education. They tell us to go to school, get good grade, and someday can land a great job. Unfortunately, there's a land of opportunity, and they gave me four choices to choose from. They said, Wani, you can become a doctor, lawyer, accountant, or engineering. All right? Land of opportunity, and I got four choices to choose from. <laughs> so I have to narrow down my choices. Okay, let's see. I'm terrible at math, so engineering and accounting was out of the picture. Lawyer, I can't defend myself in the court, so that's out of the pictures too. The only thing left was doctor. Doctor Wynn. Uh, that sounds kind of cool. <laughs> so off to medical school I went. Then I realized after two years that being in the medical field is not something I wanted to do. It's what my parents wanted me to do. Is it Asian culture? When we look at a role model, those are our mom, dad, aunt, and uncle. They're the one who influenced us, inspired us to do great things. So when my parents say, "Want to go to school to become a doctor?" Okay, mom. <laughs> you know, it's not what I wanted to do. It's what they wanted me to do. And because we want to please them, we do the thing to help please our family. And same thing when it comes to buying as well. We go out shopping. You find something you like, your mom and dad will have some input into it too. Mom, I want to buy this. Uh, no, you don't want to buy that, son. Well, why not, mom? Well, you know, look at the quality. Look at the branding. So they, they trigger that inside of us when we're growing up. They realize that, okay, so branding is really important for the Asian family. Because Asian family, they always want to focus on quality. And their mindset always shifts, okay, if this branding have a great quality behind it, that to them is fulfilling. You see, when you go to an Asian's house, nine out of 10 will drink Heineken. All right? You, anybody here went to an Asian uh, family home before? Okay, nine out of 10, Heineken. And believe it or not, we have tons and tons of Asian beers out there, <laughs> right? They don't drink Asian beer, they drink European beer. Heineken is their brand of choice. Now why is that? Why Heineken? Anybody want to take a guess? Branding. Branding. Branding, exactly. I go to my friend's house, he's drinking Heineken. Now I know he drank Heineken before, he offered me Heineken. Here, Wani, have a Heineken. Oh, golly, this tastes like any other beer. <laughs> right? I went home, and guess what beer I buy? Heineken. <laughs> I went to the store, oh, look, Mom, Dad, there's Heineken. I was over at Danny's house, and he was drinking Heineken. I think we should buy Heineken. <laughs> okay, son, you say so. Buy Heineken, and guess what? We invite friends and families over, and our friends and family who have never seen Heineken before, what is this you're drinking? Oh, it's Heineken. Hmm. You should try it. Drink Heineken, oh, not too bad. It just tastes like Bud Light, but I'll take it. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the branding and also the word of mouth. And that's how Asians buy. When somebody recommends you something, they don't even ask 
question. They just do it. Okay, because Danny drinking Heineken, it must be good. If it's good for him, it's good for me. And that's why they buy premium product as well. Because sometimes when they look at a premium product, they realize, okay, if this item is above the competitor, they must be good. And they, if they're good, the quality must be good as well. So when you want to focus on the Asian market, you want to sell them a premium product, but at the same time, you want to bring the quality up. Now here's an example. Let's say you are in a water business, all right? Starting out selling a water bottle. You got plenty of comp competitor, competitor out there, but how do you stand above the crowd? Very easy. Creatively, put a fancy name on your water bottle and charge a dollar premium more. Now that triggered a mindset. They go to the store and say, oh golly, look at this new brand that came out. They got a very creative design, a name that I can't pronounce. <laughs> and look, they charge a dollar more than the rest of the competitor. Hmm. If they all charge a dollar more, and plus the branding, the design, the logo, look very really impressive, they must be good. Mom, dad, let's buy it. Okay, son, bring it home. Bring it home, invite our friends and family over. Now, Danny came over. Hey, Danny, you thirsty? Yeah, why, come on, give me something to drink. Here, bottle of water. Danny looks at it, just like bottle of water. When did this brand came out? Oh, it just came out yesterday. But try it. Danny, try it. Why don't it just taste like any other water? Yeah, but look at the design. Isn't that cool? And also, this is the highest price for the bottle of water. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how good or bad the water tastes, it's what I suggest. If I say that is good, guess what? Dan is going to say, wow, if that's good for Wani, it's good for me. Now, guess what? Now Dan is going to go around and start promoting this new product. The product, you don't have to spend a lot of money on the marketing, advertisement. In the Asian community, it's mostly word to mouth. And nowadays, with the social media, guess what? Selfie, Facebook, social media, everything is on social media. If Danny bring that bottle of water home, take a snapshot, put it up, they say, wow, what is that Danny drinking? It triggered the mindset. I want that water bottle. Danny, where can I get this water bottle? Well, I don't know, go ask Wani. Why do we get a bottle of oh, Just go to Sam Club. <laughs> That's how it works in the Asian community. It's all word from mouth. Whatever that person's drinking, whatever the person's eating, whatever the person's wearing, it's all relationship. That's how you sell to the Asian community. Build a relationship with one or two customers and let them do all the marketing for you. Let me share with you a couple of uh, statistics on numbers. All right, if this slide doesn't incorporate, that's fine too. Over, uh, there's 140,000 Asian in the Minnesota area right now. Oh, that's fine. It's, it's not important, I can just talk. <laughs> 140,000 Asian, oh, there we go. All right, um, before I get to that, right now, just like uh, Rick mentioned earlier, the Hmong population is the, the highest in Minnesota. 
and throughout the nation as well, ladies and gentlemen. We here in Minnesota have the highest population of the Hmong community, followed by the Vietnamese with 13%, and then the Chinese. Now, the total population here is 140,000 growing. The total number of household is 35,000, and the average household, I heard earlier, between three to four. And again, just like Rick mentioned earlier, the income, the Asian community had the highest gross income. And over 52% own their own home. And again, they are big in education. 36% have a bachelor's degree or higher. 17% have a master or higher. Again, that's the same information I mentioned earlier. Right now, the Hmong and the Vietnamese pretty much dominate the metropolitan area, but the rest are following. The population is growing every year. So as you can see, right now, all the Asian is taking up 25%. The Vietnamese is 18 and the Chinese is 17%. I can see in the near future that the Chinese will surplus the Vietnamese community here in the metropolitan area. So, oh, here's some ideas on how to sell to the Asian market. I might have mentioned some earlier. Sell high-end product. You want to attract them to a premium product. Asian is big into brand name. If you look around Asian community, you see them drive around in a Lexus, a Mercedes, a BMW. Because to them, that's symbolized success. And just like I mentioned earlier, when they come to America, their dream is to become successful in whatever they do. So when they are being seen in a Lexus, a Mercedes, to them, they have achieved that level of success. So you want to sell something, sell them a high premium product. At the same time, the quality has to be superb. You don't want to sell them a high premium product, but the quality is below the average. So when you sell a premium product to them, it automatically triggers quality product. When they buy premium, it's associated in the mind that, okay, if I'm paying extra premium for this product, it has to be good quality. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Again, they don't do research. They don't go out there and uh, do marketing research. Okay, why is this product different from this product? They don't do that. What they do is peer review. I would go up to your house and say, what are you buying? What are you drinking? What are you eating? And ask from you, what do you think of this product? And that's how we buy. And that's how we judge. Uh, that's how we uh, go out there and make our det determination what we want to buy. The same thing with the, the Lexus, right? That's the first thing Asian think about when they associate Lexus, is quality. Most of them run out there and just buy a brand new Lexus because of the quality, and also a symbol of success. Sell them lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen. I mentioned earlier, if you wanna sell them a bottle of water, don't put an average guy holding a bottle of water. Okay, you want to put that bottle of water in front of a person who is successful, who's wearing a three-piece suit, sitting in the lobby of a high-end hotel. You put that water bottle in front of this gentleman, sitting in the lobby of a high-end hotel, guess what? The mind trigger. That's success. If this person is drinking this bottle of water in a high-end hotel, he is successful. And if I drink that water bottle, I am considered successful as well. That's how the mindset think, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to branding. If you put that bottle of water in any average person's hand, guess what? They could care less. They don't care if that the best quality water. They don't care if that was made from the highest quality. They don't. 
lifestyle with him. You want to sell them lifestyle. And also, nowadays, we don't have to spend a lot of money on marketing anymore. Just like I mentioned earlier, social media, if you put a nice, attractive website, guess what? They kind of go into that. They kind of, wow, this website is attractive. If this website is attractive, their product got to be attractive. So, well, that's how they see it. Educ educational program like this one. When consumer go out, they like to hear what other people are saying about other products. That's why they attend seminar like this, to learn what's out there. What are the latest? And as we share those information, they're gonna go out there and guess what? Oh, sorry. They're gonna go out there and post it on social media. Look at this, I was over at this conference and why are we talking about this brand new bottle of water? Anybody know about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not even out yet. But exactly, that's the kind of thing, you know? They gotta go out there and post everything on social media for you. So if you can sell them, the premium product, lifestyle, they will do all um, the work for you. Asian is very loyal, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a branding, a product, once they love you and once they trust your, your branding, guess what? They will bend over backward for you. They will go all the way through all the marketing for you. So those are the things you want to focus on when it comes to the Asian market. Conclusion, sell them the dream. Just like I said earlier, ladies and gentlemen, most Asian, my family included, we came to America for a new opportunity to chase the American dream. And when we're here, they have the money to spend. Ladies and gentlemen, even if they don't have the money to spend, guess what? If they like something, they can go out there and buy it. Regardless, because they want to achieve that success. By buying something that is premium, high quality, they're gonna realize, man, I'm living the dream. And that's the most Asian family one. They have a secure future for their family. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to sell any product, start with selling them the dream. That's the foundation of why I'm here. Thank you, and I'm gonna take some questions if anyone have any. You know, I, I, and, I, and I concur with what you're talking about because I, uh, I've been involved with the Asian market many, many years. We started with the Hispanic with Asian. And uh, being out in LA a lot, you see a lot of that advertising exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's done in language. But it's, it's different, it's, it's not something, if your agency or your business isn't aware of what that market is about, you'll probably say, well that's too corny, that's not, that's not, we can't do that. No, you can, because again, that is what they do, the American dream, and it's known that Asians prefer a high-end product, and, but they want the service, you're right. So this is very real, this, and, and I, I, I'm glad that you're saying it because you're here. But let me ask you something that I, 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 I understand, but I think we might not. You know, it, it, it's the clan system in, in the, let's, let's say for instance, the Hmong community. Hmong funerals are finally being understood, but they're three days long. I mean, you, you're getting, if it's a, if it's a, a Bang family, they're coming from all around the country. Talk, talk a little bit about how you connect with the family name. Let's say for instance, Bang. How is, that, how is that connectable for your marketing efforts? Yeah, that's a great question, Rick. I've been to the one we talking that's about, the funeral. It's three days long, ladies and gentlemen, just like Rick mentioned, at 24 hours, nonstop. We have guests coming in and out, in and out, nonstop. And when you want to connect to the family, it's pretty much a way to build rapport. Get to know them. Get to know what the interests are. And I'm sure um, once you start to build a trust, you can begin to ref uh, recommend products to them. Again, it's all about trust and building the 
the relationship with the, the, the family, with the Bang, the Yang, the Win, uh, the Win, Vietnam, Vietnamese, Hmong, Chinese uh, community. It's all about trust and building relationship. Any other question before I end? What's your book about? Uh, the book is about hope, and I share a lot about my personal journey here to America, and it's all tied into American dream. So check it out if you have time. All right, yeah. Rick. Thank you, Mike. Well, thanks a lot, Bonnie. And uh, you know, I have uh, I work with our Asian community here in the cities, and uh, uh, actually, uh, our first experience was meeting with some of the uh, clan leaders and um, getting them interested into cooperating with us as we did the a marketing study on, um, on the community. And it was a little interesting for me and, and because um, all of a sudden here's a Latino, member of the Latino community, asking them to cooperate with my company to do a marketing research study on their community. But we showed them a, a actually put together a piece that we were interested in uh, showing them and it was again as Wandy said it was in a very attractive setting showing middle class families and some of their buying habits and that type of thing and there was some interest there just as he was was mentioning so I think I think there's a lot of things that we have to continue to learn uh, about the about the Asian American community and as our company uh, looks forward to the future we're going to be doing a lot more on Asian marketing. I think there's some, there's some things we have to uh, learn and we have to understand, and then we have to get our marketing departments, you know, they're always a little tricky, right? Our marketing departments, <laughs> well, we don't know that language, and I don't know, I don't speak Spanish, you know, we, we've heard that before.